So, hello and welcome to another video from sickmass.co.uk where you can find lots of free mass videos, both for GCSE and A level. This one is for the Mechanics 1 module in the A level Word Excel Mass syllabus. Okay, so what's this video about? It's about connected particles, which are basically particles connected by a string or a tow bar sometimes, etc. Okay, um, it's really the first example that I want to go over, and these are just um, Small, there are only small changes from one to the other, but the idea is repeated again and again. So let's go through this one nice and slowly here. Um, this one has got a pulley, which is a very typical thing in these connected particles questions. Uh, you've got a mass of 2 kilograms here, 6 kilograms here, a light and inextensible string here, which means that the fact that it's light means it's got no weight really, um, which means it doesn't really affect the working out, and the fact that it's it's inextensible means it's not uh, stretchy, which means the tension is the same throughout the string or whatever happens to be the thing that's connecting it, like a tow bar or something. Okay, and the fact that we know the acceleration is going in this way because this is the heavier object, so those are the kind of things we assume. Sometimes, on the rare occasion, it's not a smooth pulley but a rough pulley, and they tell you the friction, therefore, okay, which is 2 newtons. Well, they don't have I suppose they could think of a question where they don't tell you the, the friction. So you've got two newtons of force there. Notice I don't write newtons on everything. Um, I could have just wrote two there. But everything is really being measured in newtons because that's how forces are men uh, measured or the units are measured in. Okay, so what is a typical way to go about doing these questions to work out the acceleration in this case? But to work out anything really, we kind of use the same method, which is... All we do is apply F equals MA force equals mass times acceleration on each of these particles independently and then we just and end up adding the two equations together and then we go towards our answer very quickly. So let's do F equals MA on particle A. Um, that's the direction of motion, so that direction is considered positive. So T minus the weight force, which is 2 times G, which is, but G is just the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. That's another useful thing to know. Um, so T minus 2G equals the mass, that's the forces, uh, equals the mass times acceleration, MA. Um, so 2 times A, basically. Remember, we're using F equals MA here, and we're using F equals MA on here now, on option, uh, object B, so that's uh, 6G, that's the positive direction, minus T, e minus 2, the friction, equals 6A, which is the mass times acceleration. Okay, so that's that. Now notice we only apply the friction on one of them, although you might think the, the friction should be applied to both of them, because they're both connected by the same string. Um, basically, just bear in mind that you should only do it on one particle, and if you do it on both particles, you're going to uh, get rid of the frictional force in the equations when you add the two equations together. So don't do that. Just put the friction on one of them, just like we do in the other um, questions. If the friction is only applied once, okay? Now, in this question, you've got friction applied to each of them, so you obviously apply the friction to each of them. Anyway, so let's do what we said we were going to do, add the two equations together together, add equations A and B together, and what do you get? Well, T plus minus T is 0, 6G plus minus 2G is 4G, and 0 plus minus 2 is minus 2. So this side is equal to 4G minus 2, 2A plus 6A is 8A. And rearranging that gives you A equals 4.65 meters per second squared. Okay, I should have put maybe meters per second minus 2 there, which means meters per second squared. Um, so that's the unit for acceleration. Um, and that's it really, found the acceleration, that's all there is to it. Uh, let's do equation t question 2, which I said is going to be the same as this, like this is going to be the same as that as well. Very simply, the only difference really is that we've got a slope of 60 degrees. Um, there's no rough pulley here. 
but we do have a rough surface so you've got a mu that we have to work out mu stands for the coefficient of friction uh, that's how rough the surface is or how rough uh, the friction is between the two uh, the object and the surface I should say and to work out the frictional force we need to use the formula friction equals mu r and r is the reaction force how much pressure we're putting against the surface um, the reaction against the surface which is equal to the pressure we're putting on the surface because that obviously affects how much friction there is um, if you, even if you have a light object by the way I'm not sure if I've explained this in another video but if you've got a light object and you press it hard against the surface there's going to be even more friction so the amount of pressure you put against the surface is how much friction you have and that amount of pressure you put against the surface is equal to the reaction force you get which is R so that's why that's the formula for friction anyway so We've talked about everything now, so let's let's do the actual working out. Um, let's talk about object A here. Uh, what are the forces? It's T minus the frictional force minus the weight component of the force going down the slope, which is just 3g sine 60. And if you don't know that, just go to the trigonometry for mechanics video on my Sig Maths website in the A level section. In the same M1 section, you'll find you will find this video. Um, anyway, so that's that. T minus 3g sine 60 minus mu r, and mu r again is uh, if you look at the trigonometry. For mechanics video tell you that R uh, or the force perpendicular to the slope is basically the weight cos the angle here so 3g cos 60 okay so basically T minus the friction minus um, the weight force is equal to mass times acceleration uh, which is 3 times A because remember we're using force F equals MA and let's do F equals MA on object B it's uh, 5G minus T equals 5A okay that was a lot more simple wasn't it because there's no friction on this particle and it's not moving on a uh, at an angle to the um, it's not moving in a slope so it's not moving at an angle so you got those two equations and you add them together and the T's cancel out as before 5G minus 3G sine 60 just write that down um, minus mu times that and add the A's together 3A plus 5A gives you 8A and if you okay so that's your equation 1 uh, we had too many unknowns because I don't know what A is so I can't work out mu so I do know what g is by the way we mentioned that earlier on that's just 9.8 meters per second squared um, so we know and we know sine 60 again if you if you watch the trigonometry for mechanics video you know that's root 3 over 2 that's really useful and you know that's half so that can be you can actually simplify all of this but still you, you need to know a before you can work out mu because that's just another unknown right so let's work out a and uh, I've thrown this into the question because um, uh, they like to beyond the usual stuff this is the usual stuff just the tension and the acceleration right okay but this is connected part this is kinematics of particles okay so check out the video also on this um, Keep this uh, they've just thrown that topic in okay so you got a initial speed of zero final speed when the particle hits the ground uh, v equals two two meters per second and it does a distance of one meter okay so if you've got some experience in this topic you will know you have to do v squared equals u squared plus two a s because you know an s which is the one you know a u which is there you know a v and you want to know what a is so it makes sense to use this formula um, and so applying it gives you v squared is 4, u squared is 0, s is 1, so 2a s is, becomes 2a times 1 which is just 2a, so 4 equals 2a, therefore a equals 2 meters per second squared now we know A, we can stick it back into here, rearrange that and you can easily get mu equals 0 0.5 I don't really want to tell you how to rearrange equations, right? That's really quite basic, yeah? That's 8 times A is 8 times 2 to 16 and move that there, move this whole blob of minus mu 3g cos 60 there and then take the 3g cos 60 and bring it underneath etc etc and you get mu equals 0 0.5 roughly okay only to one decimal place okay now let's 
quickly finish off with this again it's going to be the same old stuff um, but there are small variations so that's why I'm going over it um, this has got instead of a weight force uh, making it go forwards moving in the direction of the acceleration um, it's got a driving force okay say this is a car and this is a uh, caravan which has no driving force it's only pulled forwards by the driving force of this okay so what do you do uh, uh, you say 500 minus the frictional force these are frictional forces um, not due to the friction on the surface but due to say air resistance or something that's why we don't have any mu over here no coefficient of friction um, in fact the fact that it's 200 G, the weight of this is not important as well because you only care about the weight when you're trying to work out the frictional force, right? Um, and if you're told the frictional force, you don't have to worry about it. So, 500, uh, we're doing F equals MA by the way on this. Oh, let's start with object A like it does here. So, um, the forward force is T sine 80. Okay, how do I know sine 80? Because I'm going away from the angle. Okay, if I was going through the angle, it would be cos 80, yeah? So, through the angle would maybe go downwards. Uh, away from the angle makes me go in the horizontal direction. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, watch that video on trigonometry and mechanics and my website. Okay, I don't want to tell you all the basics or again and again. You need to know some basics to do all this, all these questions okay so basically t sine 80 is your forward direction minus the 200 which is your resistance equals your mass times the acceleration which is that okay um, that's your equation one and your equation two is uh, well 500 is your driving force minus the hundred newtons of uh, frictional force minus the tension which is going that way which is also T sine 80 like that one okay and you can see as usual they're going to cancel out when you add them isn't it okay so let's add them Oh, and by the way, and it's uh, this is 200 kilograms, so its acceleration is 200a because we do m. So sorry, sorry uh, it's m a is 200a, I should say. Um, so that's it. Uh, you add the two equations as usual, and the t sine a t plus the minus t sine a t just cancels out and you get nothing for that 500 minus 200 is sorry I thought I saw a mistake there so you got 500 minus 100 which is 300 so that simplifies there and if I'm, when I'm adding them together you get basically what did I say 500 minus 100 is 400 and when I'm adding them together I go the 400 plus the minus 200 uh, just gives me a 200 and the 500a plus the 200a gives me the 700a which just rearranged gives me a equals 2 over 7 meters per second squared and that's it really uh, is there anything else to say? Uh, so as you'd notice throughout all of these the tensions tend to cancel out when you add the equations but that should have been noticed already. Uh, I think that's the end of the